Hello everyone, in the last session I had mentioned that I'll be creating a separate video for the CloudWatch demo. So here it is. In today's session, we will discuss about how we can create a CloudWatch alarm for EC2 instances. And we will discuss about the different offerings from CloudWatch and its user interface. So I hope you are excited and if you are ready, let's begin. So let us try to understand this scenario that we have here. So, so we have our AWS services, isn't it? So let's suppose I'm using a EC2 instance and I'm working on that. And I want to actually measure the CPU utilization on based on which actually I would like to create the alarm so that I can send a notification to the user that we have or the users that we have. So if suppose there is a peak in the CPU utilization and uh, the application is going to crash, I want to just send the email notification to the users. So let's see how this can be done. And by this, by doing this, you'll get a small idea or a brief idea about how actually you can create your own alarms. Don't think that we are doing something small here. The one step that you're going to take here is trying to do an end-to-end demo so that when you go ahead and try that in your AWS account or AWS free tier account, you will have that confidence that you can try different things out there so that you don't get stuck just before trying itself, isn't it? Because there may be so many people out here who would want to have a very detailed demo on things. But if we just confuse ourselves without learning the basics, then we will never be able to achieve what we really want. That is the basic understanding of the concepts. So having said that, let's start off by creating our EC2 instance. So this is the EC2 management console. And this is the place where we are going to create our EC2 instance as we don't have any running instances right now. So the best thing for us is to click on launch instance and create our own instance. Just click on launch instance. So just select 64 bit x86 Amazon Linux 2. Select t2.micro that is the free tier eligible. Click on configure instance details. And I'll be using the default VPC right now and I'll use one of the subnets. And by default, the auto assign public IP is enabled for the subnet. I don't want to do anything here. That's it. We just need to add the storage next. So this is the default storage that we have. Don't change anything. Just add tag instance. Just configure the security group. You can just create a new one. We don't have to be bothered about this. Just review and launch. And I'll use the default SH key that I already used. And I'll click on launch instance. And if you're new, then you can just create your own EC2 key. Now click on view instance to view the instance that you have created right now. So currently it is not running and I have set the filter to running. So it is not showing the instance right now. I'll just close it. So this will be in the pending state. So this is the instance that we have. And let's suppose for this, I want to calculate or I want to create an alarm. Then the first thing that I need to do is I need to see the CPU utilization metrics, isn't it? So that is basically our benchmark. If you click on this, you will get the details about the instance. You have the security, you have the network, you have the storage, you have the status checks. And currently it is initializing. So don't worry about that. Just go to monitoring. And here you will be able to see your matrices. So these are the CloudWatch matrices that you have. And if you see here, you have CPU utilization, you have status check failed, you have status check failed for the instance on a particular account. You have the network in invites, network out invites, network packets in, packets out, and the discrete disk uh, read operation, disk write, disk write operations. And you have the CPU credit usage or the credit balance as well. So these are all the matrices that you get by default because I have not installed any CloudWatch agent and I have not created any custom metrics as of now. And if I want to create any alarms from here, I can just click on these three dots and I can just refresh this or I can add this to a dashboard that will be added to my CloudWatch dashboard. But the only thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to view this in the metrics. So if you click on view on metrics, it will take you to the CloudWatch management console. And this is your CloudWatch management console. Don't worry, we'll come back to this once again. For now, I just want to show you like what exactly uh, we are going to do uh, to create this alarm. So if you go back to all metrics, you will see the namespaces here. So we have auto scaling, we have EBS, we have EC2, Firehose, SNS, network ELB, states, 
and the one that we want is ec2 isn't it so this is the per instance matrix but for this new instance i'm not able to see any data here but don't worry about that if you come back here if you click on this one you will be able to see the graph here and this is where i wanted to tell you like you have the timelines on which you can actually view the matrix or the graph so it can be like in minutes or past one minute or three minutes or five minutes or past one or two or three hours or for the past one day or two day or past one week or two week or four week or six weeks and it goes towards like months so you can have like as many customizations as you want and you can change the time zones as well from utc to local time zone here but we don't need to do that and the actions that you see here you can actually add this matrix to a dashboard or you can share as well or you can view the logs and if you click on this one this actually refreshes the graph but if suppose i click on the drop down i can see the refresh intervals and i can change the refresh intervals like for five minutes or 15 minutes you'll be able to see the time changes here the time period changes here if suppose i wanted to make it 10 seconds also i can make it and i can actually enable auto refresh so that i don't have to do this so see it is actually trying to complete the 10 seconds and it will refresh it again so some activity is happening right now and here you have the actions and here you have create alarm so if i just click on create alarm i'll be able to create this alarm for this instance for this cpu utilization matrix for that particular instance we'll just click on create alarm and this is the place where you will be actually be able to create the alarm so if suppose I don't want to do this, I just want to come back from the CloudWatch and I want to create an alarm for myself. So I can just go here on CloudWatch. If you see the third one is alarms, you can just select alarms here and as well create alarm from by clicking on this color create alarm button and I can select the matrix here and I can choose one of the EC2 per instance matrix. So I think my instance will already be here. Okay, yeah, it is visible right now. For us, I was a bit pessimistic, I think, while I was telling you <laughs> that it won't be visible. But yeah, you have like all the matrices for your my instance that we have. So I will just select this and I'll select the matrix. Matrix, sorry. So now I just have the matrix and I know what kind of values that I want to achieve or I want to put it as a threshold. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it as a period of 30 seconds or one minute because 30 seconds actually it will not allow because this is the default uh, matrix that we have. So if suppose you click on 30, you will be having this error like only a period greater than 60 seconds is supported for matrix in AWS slash namespaces. So the default resources that you have for AWS, you have to give a minimum of 60 seconds. So the instance ID is this, so this is the one that we are currently working on. So 0BBE1, so 0BBE1. And the period that I want is like, if suppose it remains on a threshold or above threshold value for one minute, then the alarm should get triggered. Okay, so now this is done for us. So I can just choose the threshold type as static because I will just use a value. I'm not going to use the anomaly detection or a band as a threshold value. So I'll just use the static and whenever CPU utilization is greater than threshold, greater than equal to threshold, lower than or equal to threshold or lower than threshold. So we have four different conditions that you can actually make use of. These actually depend on your requirement for the application. Let's suppose you want to scale down, then you can choose something like lower than threshold so that you can see that, yeah, I don't want this resource anymore. I can just uh, delete this or I can just terminate this or I can downscale this. So if suppose I want to add any resource or I want to increase one more resource for myself, when it crosses the threshold, I can use a greater than or I can use a greater than equal to. It depends on my requirement. So here it is at 0.1, isn't it? So 0 0.08, isn't it? normally without running the instance or without using this instance also it will go towards 0.4 so don't worry about this so we will keep this at 0.6 okay so the threshold value for myself i have kept it as 0.6 so once you keep the threshold value it will be shown in the red color okay so this is done for us so just click on next and here you will get multiple options to create notifications so our main agenda is to send the email isn't it 
so the alarm state trigger is define the alarm state trigger or state that will trigger this action so in alarm we want obviously the alarm to be in the alarm state and i want to actually send this notification via an email so for that i can actually create a new topic or actually i can use a existing sns topic so if i have already an existing sns topic and i can just enter it here but as i don't have anything then i can just create a new one and you can actually change the name here there's the default name that actually gets attached if you want you can change it so now i'll provide the email address box it up sam at the red pythonic.com and i can just click on create topic and once you have created the topic aws actually will send you a subscription confirmation so you have to actually confirm that yeah you are the one who has actually created this topic and uh, you can just uh, verify that automatically so this is the email that i have received and you have chosen to subscribe to the topic please confirm subscription yeah so now this subscription is confirmed so this sns topic actually you can view this in the sns console as well so if you just click on view in sns console you will be able to see so once it has been verified you will get the status is confirmed so this is the id of the subscription and the endpoint is my email address and the protocol is email so the whole idea is that whenever the instance or the ec2 instance that we have crosses the cpu utilization threshold of 0.6 we are going to send the email to box it up sam at the red python.com so that is my email address so i'll get the notification that's it i don't want to add any auto scaling actions as of now so we are good with this you can just click on next you can just give alarm name so i'll give ec2 alarm email okay and just click on next and there's the final confirmation that you have preview and create so i have the ec2 namespace and cpu utilization the instance id instance name average the period is one minute so it will be like it will check it for like period of one minute and we have created a cloudwatch alarm topic so that it sends the notification to my email just click on create alarm now as we don't have sufficient data the first thing that you will notice is after creating the alarm that you have insufficient data as a state don't worry about this just click on this and you will be able to see the threshold value that we have here is 0 0.6 there's the line and you will be able to see the details here so here as well you get all the data points that you have like uh, threshold value cpu utilization is greater than 0 0.6 for one data point within one minute so you will get the threshold condition and the arn and there's the one that is going to be invoked once the alarm is in alarm state okay so actions so the notification is when in alarm send the topic send message to topic uh, default cloudwatch alarm top whenever any notification we have to send we'll be sending it to this topic now the history is we have created this alarm so now our main agenda is to increase the cpu utilization of our ec2 instance isn't it so this is the ec2 instance we have or else what we can do is let us do one more thing now itself let us create a dashboard that we wanted to create isn't it now you can just add click on add to dashboard it'll ask you whether you can add it to the existing dashboard or you want to create a new one so what you can do you can just create a new one for now so i'll just give it like uh, my demo dashboard and i can just click on ok so once we have created this i can just add to dashboard okay so now this is my dashboard i can save the dashboard right now and if you go to dashboards you will see two dashboards here but that i had created previously so don't worry about that just click on my db dashboard or my demo db so that's my dashboard so this is the one that is currently being monitored so i'll just minimize this so this is the ac2 instance that i have i'll just copy the public ip address and i'll try and connect to the instance i'll just edit this i'll just save it and i'll just double click on this add and continue and i'll just try to increase the space so there is a very interesting way to actually increase the cpu utilization for just for testing don't do this uh, like uh, for your um, just for sake of uh, doing this in your production environment just don't do that this is just for load testing so what we need to do is you need to install a application that is called stress 
on your Amazon Linux 2 instance. So that is what we'll do and we'll just uh, create an environment or a situation where actually we are trying to increase the CPU utilization for the instance that we have. See, without actually doing this also, I have actually kept it way too low, I think. That's why it is triggering the alarm right now. So if it goes till one minute and it still stays above the threshold value, you should be able to see the alarm. Yeah. So now once that threshold has been met, you will be able to see the alarm. I kept it very low, I think. Yes, I kept it very low. 0 0.6 was very low. I should have kept it around like 4 or 5 or at least like 10% or 20%. But that also works. Like, yeah, this is just for testing. So it's fine for us. So now I think you have got a pretty much brief idea on how actually these alarms work. So we can just see what the data points that we have and what are the things that they have mentioned in the email that you get as a part of your notification. So this is the subject line that you get alarm EC2 alarm email in Asia Pacific Mumbai. So you are receiving this email because your Amazon CloudWatch alarm this in the Asia Pacific Mumbai region has entered the alarm state because threshold cross one out of last one data point okay, was greater than the threshold 0.6. So it reached 4.03 and that was actually greater than 0 0.6 and that is on a period of one minute and these are the alarm details that you have so ec2 alarm email the state of the change was uh, the change of the state was actually insufficient data to alarm the threshold cross one out of one last data points that same thing that is written here this is the arn for the email and there's the monitored metrics so there's basically the thing that actually has been monitored using this alarm so AWS EC2, CPU utilization, there's the instance ID, there's a security second that we have, the time period that we had uh, for the breach. We'll just edit this alarm. Let us make it 10.0. And we'll see whether we are able to get this percentage by doing some stress testing. I'll just update the alarm. Okay, so this is the percentage that it has to cross, the so CPU percentage. And current state, which actually triggered the alarm, it went to up to 4 I think isn't 4.03 so now I've changed it to 10 and the threshold value has also changed so CPU utilization now is greater than 10 for one data point within one minute and now what we are going to do is we are going to install and do some stress testing so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you like how you can actually install your uh, stress testing tool and that will actually help you you can do this uh, demo as a part of your testing so you can just type sudo amazon Amazon hyphen Linux hyphen extras install EPEL hyphen Y. So this is just to update your EPL repository. So once you have done this, then only you can install stress because it will fail. Otherwise, it will say that no repository found. So you have to update this first, then you have to install that. So the next step is sudo yum install stress so now uh, once you have installed stress what you can do is you can just clear this first and you can just type stress hyphen hyphen help and there are two things that we actually need here so one is the cpu and one is the timeout so for that what i need to do is i can just type stress hyphen hyphen cpu okay so i'll just use two for now and hyphen hyphen timeout so if you see you have the timeout so timeout is uh, like uh, you can just keep it like around 60 seconds so not a problem we'll see how much it is trying to peak here it has actually reduced now and the cpu utilization is currently at okay state so we'll see how much it actually peaks so if it is not sufficient then i'll increase the time frame or the cpu count just click on enter Okay, let us change it to CPU to 4 and this to 180 seconds. Let's see how it actually breaks. Yeah, see, <laughs> it just went up to 28, 28.1. Okay, that's good yeah now we have received the alarm as well so the threshold value actually has increased from 10 
228 isn't it and that is why it has sent us the alarm good isn't it so now we have it's a very good thing for us but this is not a good thing to actually have in the production environment you have to monitor these things very carefully so if you see here we created the alarm so insufficient went to okay okay so if okay actually went to insufficient because it remained in that bigger space so now what has happened is from insufficient it became to in alarm or it went to in alarm and it raised the action so that is the action that we wanted to have so default cloudwatch alarm topic and that is when it actually sent the alarm to us and once again we updated the condition for the alarm and we raised the threshold value to 10.0 and post which it again went to ok state and from there insufficient to alarm and then it sent back once it actually crossed the threshold it actually uh, executed the operation for us so which actually sent the alarm or the send the email isn't it and that's how we are able to send an alarm using cloudwatch just by having a cloudwatch metrics that is the cpu utilization so if you don't want any of this again now right now just click on this and delete this i don't want this anymore so it became insufficient because there is no activity right now so i'll just delete this i don't want it okay so we are done with this now and the next thing that i wanted to delete was this so we have a lot of topics here i think okay so this is the one that i wanted to delete i'll delete this we need to clean up okay this is the dashboard that i have and now let's suppose i want to change the region i can just click here and i can change it to some other region like us west 2 but you're still able to see the graph because now in aws you don't have to do anything to get your cross region uh, dashboards in one place you can just have them in any region that you want and you will be able to see them in any other region as well so don't worry about this so this was a small hands-on demo for cloudwatch and uh, i'm sure you would also try and experiment this on your free tier account and if you're dead then please comment on how you did and what exactly were the results that you were able to get and if you faced any issues also you can put them in the comment section and uh, we can discuss on that so this was just a small hands-on demo that i just wanted to share with you for now for today we will be creating a few more cloudwatch demos moving on so that we get an overall picture of how actually cloudwatch works for now i feel this is sufficient so i don't think so there is much to be worried about so that's it from my side today stay safe stay healthy and it's pythonic signing off